Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. Today is a special one. We're going to talk about how to install a Rune on a Raspberry Pi. Basically, Rune is a very popular software and to run it on a Raspberry Pi, you just need to install Rupee. So in this video, we're going to take you step by step on how to install Rupee on a Raspberry Pi. A lot of you have been asking me to do that because they don't rely too much on articles, but seeing a video on how it's done from start to finish is going to be interesting and takes all the mystery behind it. Also, we're going to integrate it with the Rune Core at the end. So this is like start to finish how to set up Rune on your Raspberry Pi. So you could be running a very simple thing like a, a protodac maybe on your Raspberry Pi and just simple as that. Or maybe running something like the, uh, the D6 platform with all the EN Canada parts, but this end is still running on a Raspberry Pi or like my uh, D11 big uh, DAC here also running on a Raspberry Pi. You may ask why Rune? Rune is a very popular software, is known everywhere, a lot of audio files like it and uh, it does not need an introduction. It's the best way to integrate your local library with different streaming platforms. Say you have Tidal, Kobas, and you still have a few files that you have on your library. You can integrate them all in one software. So it's a seamless way of navigating things and it ties things nicely together. If you're interested in Rune and you like to support the channel, I have a, a free introductory offer in the description below. Check it out and, and uh, if you end up subscribing to Rune, it will really help the channel a little bit. But I am not doing it for that purpose. It's mostly because I believe in the product. I've been a user of Rune for many years. I have a lifetime subscription. I started with a trial like few people, then did a monthly, and then soon enough I, I switched to a lifetime subscription. Anyway, let's start by showing you how to install Rupee or Rune on a Raspberry Pi, step by step, start to finish. First thing, get yourself a micro SD card and an adapter, either a USB adapter or an SD card adapter, so you can fit that in your computer. On your computer, just uh, type rupee.org. Remember, rupee, there's three E's in it. And uh, you get to the main page. From there, we are going to select XL. Now, you can use a regular software, but I prefer to use the XL. Why is XL? So on top of the regular Rune endpoint software that you're going to download, you're going to also be able to play Spotify, AirPlay, DLNA, and so forth, and a few other things. Uh, what's why that important? Say you are you have some friends over, your kids' friends, or they come over and they want to play. Usually they have Spotify. They want to connect to your beautiful speakers and system and this way they can actually play from their own Spotify and connect to your speakers. You can actually connect via AirPlay and, uh, and make things a lot easier plus all the other uh, possibilities as well and there's nothing to lose by installing Excel. So so we said we're going to use Excel so it says here you can download Rupee Excel image from software section so you click on that and that takes you to the Rupee Excel download software. Here you have to decide, are you using it for a Pi 3, uh, maybe 0 or W2, or is it for a Pi 4? Uh, so in my case, I'm going to be using it for a Pi 4. So I'm going to click on this image here. And you're just going to download that software. So I click on the image here, and automatically it gets downloaded. Uh, usually you'll find it in your download section. Now, while you're here, you also want to use, you want to download Etcher. And you click on Etcher. And why Etcher is, Etcher is going to let you create an image of that uh, software you just downloaded on your SD card. So you're going to need to download Etcher. So you click download. This is a free software. Once download. you download Etcher, you just open it. You will see the screen and you're going to click on flash from file. And from there, you're going to be able to see the file where you want to select. So it's in your download section. You go there and you select that first file that you see. It's called Drupy uh, Excel. 
and uh, next you're going to select the target so this is where you put in your sd card in the computer so you select that particular sd card make sure you select the right one and from there you just click flash and boom you have flashed your card once you have flashed your micro sd card then all you have to simply do is uh, find your raspberry pi and just insert it in it uh, if you are using a setup like uh, the uh, pure pi the micro SD card might be, and you have already built it, it's a little bit down in there. You might need to grab like a piece of pliers like this. It's just a lot easier or maybe a pair of tweezers to pull it out. Uh, it's really simple, but it's just once you, so you don't have to take it all apart again. Uh, if you are using something simple like this, for example, Protodac setup, then you just flip it upside down and uh, basically insert the card just like that. So you're going to need two things here, a network cable, so we're going to plug that in, and you're going to plug in the power, a 5 volt uh, power supply, I'm using the iFi uh, power supply, I'll put a link of that below as well, it's a good one, that's very cost effective. So at the first you just have a red light, and then you'll see the green light starting to flash and flicker, and that means the uh, software is loading. And uh, at the beginning you could see it, it's flashing really fast and that could take some time, so just be patient with it. And after a period of time you will see that the flashing becomes slow, it'll be more like tch, 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 and you'll see it in a second. All right, here it is, you could see now that it's flashing more like a, a slower pace. So that means the software is installed, it's ready to go. If you really need to see more what's going on, just plug in an HDMI cable to your TV or monitor and you get to see what the Pi is doing. It's a little bit better. And at the end it will tell you, it'll give you an error code that's not connecting to Rune Core because it's not yet connected and it will give you the IP address and that IP address could be valuable to diagnose and install things even further. So you go on your browser and you type rupee.local I think I've got too many E's there. So rupee.local. And you press enter and that should take you to the screen of your Raspberry Pi. Now if that doesn't work for some reason, uh, you can plug in a monitor to your uh, Raspberry Pi via the HDMI cable. And uh, from there you can see on your TV screen what uh, the uh, network uh, uh, is so it might say 10.0.0. blah 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 so you type that address on top here instead of rupee.local and that should get you in so once you're in you're gonna go this is still blank not really configured i'm doing it as we go together here so under system under host name you need to give it a name and this is where you need to give it the unique name what you're gonna call this device so i'm gonna call it Gapster D9, just like that. And uh, time zone in Canada, Pacific time, here you go, Canada Pacific time. And I'm going to say apply. Once you say apply, it's going to say please configure. So you say OK, and you guys press configure. And this will say your device is being configured, don't interrupt, so we just wait have a sip of coffee or whatever and uh, come back and check it out in a few seconds and it should be reconfigured. Here it is. So that is good. Now it will tell you a re device requires a reboot. Just hang on till we otherwise we're gonna have to reboot 20 times. So let's just do one do it all together at the same time. Under audio uh, it says there is no hat configured. Uh, unless you have one of these particular devices, there's one called Raspberry Pi DAC Generic I2S, which is the very last one. So you pick that one, the Raspberry Pi DAC Generic I2S. This should work for most of in Canada stuff. So this is probably a good one to use, unless, like I said, you're using some of the other stuff. Uh, the rest, basically, you just leave as it is. I usually turn the audio USB off because I don't, I'm not using uh, USB and this way it turns it off and that reduces the noise in the card as well and one more time we're just going to press apply 
and it says configure, it says OK, and press configure one more time, so you can let it configure. And here she goes, that's good. Then you go to network. Uh, right now we have wired network, so and that's good. If you want to enable wireless, you can. You can click this here, and this will enable the wireless. From here you can click under wireless, and you can select a network. So we have to click scan, so it's going to scan for networks. There you go, it automatically picks it up actually. And uh, we've got the password put in. I'm just going to put in the password here. I'm just going to click apply again and press OK. And uh, this time didn't ask for configure, that's good. Oh, no, it did. <laughs> so configure. So we're going to configure that again. So remember the name you typed in there, GAP39, because that's important. Exactly, you have to remember the spaces, the capitals, the letters, and everything. If you have installed the screen, you will see here a tab called screen. It will automatically appear. So we don't have a screen attached, so we're not going to see that. If you're interested in attaching a screen, I made a video just on that. Just look at it under my videos. And from there, you get all the instructions on how to add screen. Because adding screen, unless you're using the official Raspberry Pi, you'll have problems because not all screens are compatible. Make sure you pick the screen I talk about in my video, uh, especially if you're using the 5-inch screen. Uh, the, this uh, room does not support anything but the official Raspberry Pi uh, screen, but it does support other certain screens. And the one I talk about in the video is supported. So if you want to do a screen, like I said, check out that video. I'll put a link in the corner here for it and in the description. Then you've got advanced. Under advanced, you can just, uh, this is just if you want to schedule a rebooting time. I suggest you keep all this the same. Under services, remember we installed Rupee XL. So for that, there is some options you can choose. But first, it's asking us to reboot. So we're just going to let it be for now. We're going to keep going till the end and we reboot all at the same time. Uh, here, if you have AirPlay or Spotify Connect or anything like that, make sure you set up, for example, if you're setting up Spotify, you click in here and uh, under account name and account password, you're going to put your account username and account password here. And this will make it connect to your Spotify account. And so for they're fairly easy to to figure out and this just information tells you how hot your screen is and all that stuff and then you got devices if you have other raspberry pi's running on the network they're going to all show in here for example i've got my gap streamer 5 running so you get to see it here i can click on it here and i can configure it as well if i want but we're not going to do that right here so right now we're done with all this so we're going to click reboot and we're going to say okay so now your Pi is going to reboot. So it takes a few seconds, sometimes a couple minutes. If you have a fast uh, SD card, it goes quite fast. If you have a, a slow SD card, it takes a bit of time. And here it's coming back alive. It says your device is initializing. So we're going to let that initialize. So this takes a bit of time, probably all together. Maybe it'll take you about a good uh, 20 minutes to uh, set it up. And uh, now it's just back to, uh, so if you need to reconfigure anything, you can do it again. You can do it as many times as you want, but we're done basically. So it's all configured. So the next step will be to go and set up and have the root core uh, software recognize it. So as far as the installation on the Raspberry Pi, we are done. If you've never installed Rune before in your life, I'm making a video just on that. Also, in my description below, I have a free uh, trial for Rune. So I strongly encourage you to use that link and connect to Rune and uh, get the trial. And try it and see if you like it. Uh, if you do try it and link uh, from my link, you're actually supporting my channel indirectly for me so I can keep making videos like that. Uh, the next thing so we want to do after we get Rune running is we're going to go under setting. 
So we're going to click settings. You're going to have a whole new set of things. And the next one you want to see is audio. So you click audio. And here you're going to have see a lot of things. Depend what you have in your house. I've got a lot of things. First, these are things on your PC. And uh, then connected to the core. Uh, most of them are their computer. Then you can see here my gap streamer 5 that's already configured. And then you see this uh, sound RPI, RPI DAC. This is kind of what you're looking for. Anything with RPI. You could see your rupee. This is, the, uh, this is actually your network address. If you ever trying to configure your rupee, write that down. Usually it stays the same, but sometimes it can change. So there is also a way to keep a fixed address in the configuration. So it's always being the same. Anyway, long story short, all you have to do here is find it and click Enable. Pretty much that's all you need to do. And now you got to give it a name. Remember what I said? Remember the name we gave it before? We're going to give it that exact same name. So we're going to call Gapster space D9. That's why it's important to remember that name. It makes things easier. We're going to press Enter. And that's pretty much it for this part. So I restarted the run, and hopefully let's go see under settings and under uh, make sure first it still displays under audio. And you can see our D9 seems to be working fine. There are sometimes you might have to go under settings and go under extensions, and you might have to uh, you go under view here. Or sometimes if you have an old device that's running and it's causing you trouble and you're no longer using it, you might want to remove it from the list so it's no longer being used. But these are ones that I keep turning on and off, so I'm not going to take anything out. So basically we are done here. You've got basically configured your Raspberry Pi and it's all working and everything is well. So last thing we're going to do, we're going to make sure this thing is working. So I am going to click on the zone here and select the D9 unless it's already selected. So I'm selecting my D9 that I just reconfigured. And uh, we are going to play a song. I'm going to pick a song that is YouTube friendly so we don't get demonetized here. Let's play this one. Here we go. And it's uh, working just beautifully. And now you can enjoy the music. So, as you can see, this is a step by step. Visually, you can see exactly how I set it up. And if you have any trouble, you can refer to this video and see it. I wish I had videos like this when I was setting up my Raspberry Pi. I struggled for a few days trying to configure it. And that's why I feel like I need to do these videos to help people that are trying to set things up the first time. Because it is intimidating. And even though you have the manual, sometimes you could see what they're selling you. It's not the same as seeing it on a video and seeing it done and seeing all the little tiny nuances in that setup. If you are interested remotely in Rune and you've never tried it before, uh, please click on the link in the description below and give it a try. And if you end up subscribing, it's an indirect way of helping the channel. I uh, hope you like this video and I'm trying, I will be doing another video on how to install the Rune Core on your laptop or Windows or maybe Mac. If you're interested in running Rune on a Nook computer, I have a special video, it's already out, it's been out for a couple months now, and it's in my videos, just look for it. It describes step by step how to install Rune on, on a Nook uh, little Intel computer. It's one way to do it if you're getting advanced, but if you're only starting out, I strongly suggest you just install Rune on your uh, home computer. That's one good way to start because you really don't need uh, a Nook and all that. Only if you start using it a lot and you get a little bit advanced. I hope uh, again you like this video. I'll uh, put a couple links in the corners about other videos I have. Uh, one of them about how to install Rune on the on a Nook as a make that as a core and I'll put a link on the other corner here about how I built those beautiful speakers. Take care and see you again.